today we had our meeting at Panera Bread, which we love. It's, it's where we get to sit and have our discussions and speak inspiration into each other. We get to hear a lot of really great stories. We do things that others aren't willing to do. And I love being a great leader. And it really makes people know there's always hope. Hey guys, Dr. Odom here. I just want to keep you talking to you guys about what we were talking about last week, which was questions that great leaders ask. Um, so I want to start this off um, with a question is, if you want to know what somebody values or thinks important, what should you listen to? If you remember last week, we talked about, we talked about the answer to that, which is that questions reveal three things. The first thing is they reveal value, they reinforce behaviors, and they reinforce values. So if you want to know what's important to somebody, listen to the questions that they're consistently asking you. You'll actually figure out what they think is important. If you want to know what you think is important, listen to the questions that you can consistently ask other people, and you'll see what your one of your core values is. It's uh, whatever's coming out in the question. Um, so last week we talked about how questions reveal value. This week we're going to talk about the reinforcing part of it, okay? Um, and stories and questions are the best way to reinforce value. And every business should have stories, no matter what the business is or company is. Because if you're not in the business of impacting people, then I believe that you need to you need to rethink your sole purpose. Because every business, every organization, everything should be about impacting people. So there should always be stories to be told. Um, if you ever come here into the office after a shift, after we've seen people, I always go, I, I, first thing I ask is, uh, I ask, how do we impact people? Tell me some stories. Um, and the reason I do that is because I love hearing the stories myself, and it gets me motivated. But it also reinforces a certain value that I want everybody around me to know what's important, is that the impact that we have is what's important. And if you can impact one person, you can impact many people. If you can impact many people, they can impact many people, and you could actually have a big, big, big change in the world around you. Um, and it's all about what you focus on, and you have to be intentional with it. Stories are really good at reinforcing value and behaviors because they do two things. They lead to collaborative action, and they give the audience, and because they give the audience an experience. So what I mean by collaborative action, the word collaborative means like one or more people doing something together. And action means doing something, if you want to think of it in its simplest form, okay? So stories lead to collaborative action. What I mean by that is the whole purpose of communicating with somebody or telling somebody something is because you want them to do something with whatever you said. And what I mean by that is you want them to at least remember it at the bare minimum. You want them to use it. You want them to apply it. You want them to change the way they think you know, or something. You have a purpose for telling them something. Um, what you don't want to do is you don't want to tell somebody something and then it just bounce off. It doesn't matter. Like you say it and then five seconds later it's gone. What's the point? So stories lead to collaborative action. So that means we're both working together to get to the same thing, which is I'm the person that's telling somebody something, so I'm actively doing that. The other person actively takes it in. They use it. They remember it. They, they, it changes them. It impacts them. It does something, whatever the purpose of what you're saying is. So stories lead to collaborative action which is the opposite of saying something and it bouncing off there. Okay, So if you say something, you want it to stick, and stories are a good way to have that happen. Second thing stories do is they give the audience an experience. And that's important because people don't remember facts very well. People remember experiences very, very well. Um, one reason why that is is if you do a functional MRI, they did this on people, which is like if you ever heard like uh, seen something like the, the person's brain, the, the computer screen with the MRI of someone's brain, and they say it lit up here or turned red here, and you see the colors kind of glowing. Um, if you do one of those tests, which is a functional MRI on somebody, and you use action words in a story, it actually lights up the person who's listening, their, uh, the part of their brain that makes them move. So it's like they actually did the movement themselves. It's, they experience it. If you use strong sensory words, it does the same thing. It lights up part of the brain that actually processes senses and you know different you know, taking in senses. So if you use a, if you tell a story with action words with with strong sensory words, it's like the person is, is actually experiencing the words that you're saying. Um, and you have to remember, people remember facts very poorly, and they remember experiences very very well. What I mean by that is, if I'm, everybody's been somewhere where they've had people hit them with statistics and different numbers and how things happen. Um, and truthfully, after, after you've been on the end of hearing that, or if you're on the other end of telling somebody that, 
if you ask that person five, or if you ask that person five minutes later, or if someone asks you five minutes later, what would you said or what did you hear? I don't think that person would remember hardly anything that you just said. Um, how long would it take for them to sit there with a piece of paper with a statistic written on there, studying it before they could actually tell it back to you? It would take some effort because, like I said, humans are not good at remembering facts like that. That's why we write to-do lists and we have to check them a thousand times because we can't remember what we're supposed to do. But people remember experiences and stories very, very, very well. Um, and what an example I, I gave earlier today um, when, I, when we were speaking was, uh, for me, I don't watch the news, um, so I try not to surround myself with uh, those type of words. But I'm not going to lie, I do look at Facebook, and there's little clippets and little videos of stories, and there's always a story that I, that impacts me. So if you ever hear a story on the news, on the internet, of something that impacts you in a negative way or positive way, something that moves you positively or something that moves you negatively, for me it's always a story about a dog. If I see a dog on Facebook in a video, I click on it immediately and I can watch that video or you can watch that video or hear it one time and you can you can on demand recall that story instantly you could tell 500 people that story on call and you put no studying effort into it and it's because it's the experience that you felt when you heard the story so people remember facts poorly and remember experiences very very well so that's why stories are so important when you're talking to people because they reinforce the value that you want to have and it actually helps them remember the value that you want them to hear okay so in the context of what we do here we tell people a lot of stuff so what's the point of telling somebody something is it because it's your job and you're you're supposed to say it is it part of a script is it something just have, you have to get out so you don't get in trouble or is the point of communicating with somebody so they accept it and so they remember it they use it they apply it to their life depending on what you're saying you know what I mean? You have to think of your objective. If your objective is to get them to actually remember, use, and apply what you're telling them to, you can't ha you can't tell them things in a factual way. You have to try to make it a story. It doesn't have to be a long story. It could be a one or two sentence story, but that helps them remember it. Okay. So just try to remember that when we're doing the things around the office. If you sensory words, action words, emotions, those are the things that people remember. Okay. Stories give the audience an experience. So as a team, when we're talking to each other. We're the audience to each other as when we're helping the people that come to the office, the people that come to the office are your audience. So remember when we're talking to each other, we want to have the experience so we can remember what we're saying so that actually the words that come out are communicated properly. The same thing for people that come in when we say things to them, we want them to remember it, apply it, and use it. So go with experience rather than factual. Another point I want to talk about, kind of jumping, jumping subjects a little bit, is that we can't grow in rows. We only grow in circles. So what I mean by that is you can learn in rows. So think about a classroom with a desk or sit in, in, in lines of rows. Um, or if you think of it, if you think of most churches, you have pews and chairs and things in there. Um, so you can't, you can't grow learning. You can't grow sitting and taking notes. You can learn sitting and taking notes. You can learn in rows, but you can grow personally and spiritually in a row. It takes circles, it takes communities, it takes people coming together, having discussions, having dialogues, working through the information, telling each other stories, processing the information, and coming together as a community and figuring out what was just learned. So if you think about it, you learn in a church environment, you learn in church by sitting in rows. And then and in the small groups is where a lot of the growth happens. It's like when people come together, they're talking, they're sharing different stories, different experiences, different ways to think about things. Um, that's where a lot of the actual growth happens, is in circles. So if you ever hear me say, we can't grow in rows, we grow in circles, that's what I'm referring to. There's nothing wrong with rows. Rows are, rows are fantastic. That's where you learn. That's the start spot. You have to have that learning before you can take that into your community, into your circle, and then grow from it and have those conversations, dialogues, and stories. And the reason that I brought that idea to you guys is because when I first learned that I thought it was impactful and I immediately thought well how can we get patients into circles we're really good at get them into rows and the learning and how can we get them to take that information and then get into a circle get into a community where they can talk to each other tell each other stories and grow with that information I feel like that's the real question if we can get people to go from rows to circles then we really got something going on so as you guys are going through your day or going through your week um, if you come up with a good idea of how to get take people from the rows, which you're really good at, 
put them in the community with each other so they could talk, have dialogues and discussions, tell each other stories. Um, please let me know. I, that's what that's what we're trying to figure out right now. That's the question that we're trying to get to. Okay. Um, so the two questions that I'll leave you with, the challenge for this week or for the next couple of weeks is how can we take people from rows into circles so they can grow after what they've learned? And what stories are we telling people that come into the office? Think about that. Think of the questions you're constantly asking them. Um, and that shows them what you value and it reinforces our values here at the office. Okay? So think about those questions we're asking people that come in here. And then my third question, my third challenge I have for you guys is to think about the patients coming in, think about the questions they're asking you on a consistent basis. That shows what they value. So we need to know what they value, so we need to see what their focus is, and then we need to ask them the appropriate questions on a consistent basis so they can see what our values are. We can, we can reinforce what we think is important, different values, different behaviors. And we need to tell each other stories so we can actually remember the things that we're communicating. Okay? That was it for this week. I really, really appreciate you guys. Next week. Thank you guys. Thanks for having me on the journey.